Thornbridge Manor. The Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The Revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private in... Oh, by the way, I told Kate about this tech. What did she say? Well, I thought she'd be mad at me, but she just thanked me. Said she understood the position I was in. Uh, we had a really good talk about it, actually. Well, what did I tell you? She's a sensible woman. And that stuff from your ex was like manipulation 101. I know, I know. I guess I thought she was going to read into them and freak out. Say I must have done something to provoke her. Shit, man. Caroline really did a number on you. I've never seen the place guarded like this, and, and, and I dare say I don't like it at all. This is what I mean. You have to be patted down before you see Madame Carlyle inside. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. You assume too much, Madame Carlyle. The crime scene, if such exists, 
is never where I Do as you wish. However, I expect a result in a timely fashion. Fernsby will take over from here. I'm Mr. Fernsby from the butler. I will try to assist you as best I can. Where would you like to start your investigation, sir? Where's the family? I like to prime the suspects a bit. Madam Carlyle's family members are all on this floor. Maybe start in the sitting room. If you'll follow me this way. Priming, you say. That sounds interesting. It's like planting seeds that will grow into telling action. Before I leave you to it, I already have. And fruit they bear. You are bold, not easily faced, self controlled, and always a step ahead. All qualities a murderer would benefit from. Wouldn't you say? I wouldn't know, I'm afraid. If that is all, sir, please do come and find me when you feel ready to inspect the crime scene. Just one question Is that burned leather? Unusual for a butler to burn leather. I don't I, I don't know what you what you seeds, Mr. Fernsby. Seeds. Just a little one. What a marriage. Splendid dynamics between the two. Loaded with conflict, unsaid fears and desires. I could just stare all day. Yes, that explains a lot. You strike me as independent Perfect. and self-sufficient, taking a break where the family might see you. Perhaps you're also perceptive. Good. 
Tell me the first I'll odd thing that comes to mind when you think of the last 24 hours. Uh, let me think. First thing, don't think. Um, okay. Well, I'm sure I left 20 quid in my locker, but when I came in this morning, it was only a fiver. No, not perceptive at all. Muddy prints from high hills. Expensive. Size six. If you're dressed like a Detective 47, you might as well act the detective. I suggest you go talk to the butler. Mr. Whitmer, are you ready to inspect the crime scene now? I am. Very well, if you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that the staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madam's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madam Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Zachary was shopping for new Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. A hidden door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. You've likely not exhausted the room for clues, 47. Why don't you use your camera to scan the... Dead body, 47. Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you.
Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security uh, had arrived. I've uh, just this remembered morning. I went for a stroll behind the that greenhouse means last Adam's night. Adam's family Maybe and that's myself. Where it is. What is As the only person here button. when he died. The one you couldn't and find at the graveyard. Ask, no, I do not have an alibi. Now, I was alone a good idea. in my office at the yes. time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmer, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. This is very useful information. Come and see me when you do. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? So watch yourself around young Mr. Patrick. It's, it's Don't worry about me. butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? What did you think of Zachary? <laughs> Creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexi used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God Daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married Mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreedings her customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back. Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Gregory Carlyle. Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, the, the short of it, uh, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Anything else you want to pry? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle, but who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger bore. He's better off dead. Is that all? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. And I bet Mother spent the last week at her Cypress estate. Am I right? I'm not at liberty to say, ma'am. Uh, Fitzpatrick talking to Madame Carlyle's daughter. Rebecca? Yes. She's insistent, that one. She kept asking all kinds of questions. Who had the other one? Why I gave it to her, that sort of thing. You did make sure she didn't see you give the other one to the butler? Oh, of course. Did you find 
find out that the vote was notarized. But how the hell did that happen? Nope. We all signed it. I gave it to him in person. He says he got it notarized the very same day. Right, listen. You go to their office and ask for Cheryl. She's the best they've got. Tell her you want to see the records. And don't take no for an answer. And call... Huh? Um... Excuse me, sir. I think that belongs to you. Right, listen. You go to their office and ask for Cheryl. She's the best they've got. Tell her you want to see the records. And don't take no for an answer. And call me as soon as you've got them. Thanks, Phil. We'll get to the bottom of this. Looking good, looking good. Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have a lot to see to. Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. That's a token for a vault in the Milton Fitzpatrick London Bank. You need a pair, and you gain access no questions asked. I bet that's where Madame Carlyle keeps a copy of the Edwards file. Any kind of explanation. It's bloody rude, that's what it is. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmire, you have enough evidence to present your case for... Madam...
Good job, 47. You now have both tokens needed for us to get the file on Arthur Edwards from the London Vault. Time to take care of Alexa Carlisle. No need to panic. I don't know who you think you are, sir, but I'm not letting you pass. Just keep calm. Ford Jr. calling from Morgan Yates and Cone. I need to get a listing of assets. This all confirms that Arthur Edwards stole everything from Madame Carlyle. Perhaps you should let her know how bad it is, 47. Stay alert. Look over there. Please stay back. For centuries, the Carlyles have fought to prosper, all of us, alone. You could only be like Crocodile. We could crush them.
Mission complete. Well done, 47. Rosie thinks she's in love with young Patrick. And that's a breaking part. I see a lot of keys around. You're going to have to... 